Hello, ladies and gentlemen on YouTube. We are continuing our coverage of the LEC. Uh, we're continuing right away from Fnatic's Draft Kingdom in Game 1 of the Week 5. And then uh, they're continuing their Draft Kingdom in, uh, of course, Day Number 3. I mean, Day Number 2, sorry. Only I got an itch on my head, I don't know, so I got distracted. My hair is crazy today, man. I don't know what to do with it. But uh, we continue. So, analyzing the first three, Brock and Blue Side Ban is cool. This is also cool, and this is also cool. But this is only cool if the enemy bans Soraka. So the issue here is that you're trading Soraka for two OPs, which makes Fnatic Draft stonks. Stonks. There is three OP champions in the game right now. Soraka is the most OP, second is Orn, third is Aphelios. So if you trade one for one, it's okay. If you trade one for one, right? It's definitely okay here, right? But here, like, the moment on blue where the enemy hasn't shown a ban, if the enemy hasn't banned Soraka, Orn, or Aphelios in first three, first two bans, you have to ban it yourself. So here, I think this should have been Soraka ban. This should be Soraka ban. And then you first pick Orn over Aphelios. Because now, what did you do? What did you do? You set up enemy for the best Orn on the planet. Orn. Stonks. Stonks. You ban two key champions against for Orn. So here, Orn, Giga Stonks. And you give them a failures. So already now, we can cover everything else, but already from here, it's, uh, it's rough. It's very rough. Just, just, you need to... Another thing is, we have not seen that... We haven't seen Fnatic. We haven't seen... Fnatic actually play Soraka. We've seen them play Aphelios. We've seen them play Orn. So why don't you just gamble here and check if Fnatic actually plays Soraka? I can't imagine people playing Soraka. Maybe they don't pick Soraka even. Maybe they just ignore Soraka. Then the MF Nautilus, which is okay. It's not terrible. This is okay. But it also shows to me that Destiny is kind of a Nautilus one trick, no? Pantheon. So keep in mind, guys, this is a triple flex. This is mid, jungle, top. So we don't know anything. 
We don't know anything from we don't know anything about the draft just yet. So this is really really good already. Like first three I think is is really really good. Can, Pantheon can be support too. Pantheon support is pretty boosted here, right? Like if they put Pantheon support here, then they are inting. So I don't mention this as an option. Pantheon Aphelios bot lane. You guys are hitting some heavy bongs. Massive bong hits, guys. <sighs> bong hits. MF Leona would be so much better. Why? Not to lose Leona, same shit, man. And at least Nautilus is not counted by mobility. Oh man, you know what really bothers me, man? It really boils my blood. It's like we're talking about Pantheon third pick. And then people say, support Pantheon. And then the Lindrus one says, Pantheon second pick and Talia third. <laughs> No, no, no. Pantheon, Mount Targon, first pick, whatever. Like, we're talking about Pantheon, third pick. This is nice. I want to see more trash. I want to see more trash, man. Trash is OP. Trash is OP. In a meta where AD carries... Don't have any mobility. Why is why are people playing so little trash? It's unbelievable. Thank you. Thank you for locking in trash. Thank you for locking in trash. Trash locking, very good. And then rise. How did we get to rise? Is Rise good against Orn? I'm gonna be honest. If I'm here, OG, I don't know what to pick. It just gives options to go mid, jungle, top, or both with those three picks. Yeah, but it's like, you need to understand what is the reason for a flex. There needs to be a reason. It needs to be good, right? And you don't flex things just to flex things, right? Oh, I can put everything. It's like, why, like, flex, it's like saying, oh, I'm going to pick Kindred and flex it support, bot, mid, top, jungle. But it's a shit pick. So who cares? Right now, they have everything they need. You don't need to flex, flex AD carry. Like, of course you pick a failures. Oh, see, why am I even, why am I even entertaining this conversation? This is the best three picks they can have. You want to flex so the Soraka can play versus Orn? No. Here, like, the OG is lost. The, there is nothing good to pick. I can't, I can't think of what they should pick. Would sending Soraka support be crap and then what, Nautilus top? Soraka support is not bad. But then to trash Aphelios is not good. Like, it's okay into trash, honestly. It's not that bad. These bands are nice. I, I like these bands against OG. It was a big draft kingdom. Not, oh, no, let's not start this again. Let's not start this again where people say, Oh, pick Nar into Orn. No, no, no. This was not a question to you guys. So stop answering. Stop answering. Always when I ask myself the question, I don't know what I should pick here, I always get 
barraged with these suggestions that make absolutely no sense. Yeah, rise can be flex support. Yeah, yeah. Nice. I think just first three drafts is lost for OG. Draft is just lost for OG. It's just that best blind pick, best blind pick on blue is Syndra Leblanc. Both champs not so good against Orn. So he's picking Rise. I don't know. I, I don't even remember the rest of the draft. Alexei. Oh. The Zack. Draft Kingdom. Nothing against you, but a lot of times you have strong opinions that doesn't make sense whatsoever in the end. Okay, give a give a give a give a suggestion. Yeah, tell me tell me an opinion that doesn't make sense in the end. Say it. What, what, which one is it? Yeah, tell me. Tell me, what is my strong opinion that doesn't make sense in the end? Say it. Say it, please. Come. Say it. Say it. A lot of them in LEC broadcasts. Okay, so what? Like what? Give an example. Don't remember now. Don't remember now. Guys, I don't remember. I don't remember now. Oh. 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 Don't remember now. Shit. Oh. Unlucky. Unlucky, guys. Don't remember now! Ah. I would say Vega opinion was controversial. Okay, okay. Yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, nevertheless, um, I like the Pantheon Talia into Soraka, honestly. It's it's pretty cool. I think no one has ever no one has ever tried to actually punish Osoraka in lane or do something like this. And with the combination of Talia Pantheon, it actually gives you a lot of options. And here Fnatic need to pick an AP jungle last. It's just that keep in mind here. OG are in a position where they have to uh, heavily consider like I think Cassio banned, they just banned Cassio because they want to pick Ryze, but I don't know what's the point of picking Ryze. Like, sure, Ryze against Orn can be, like, okay-ish. Doesn't take criticism whatsoever just to try to ch shame me. Man, you didn't even criticize me. You didn't. You didn't actually say anything with context. You didn't give anything at all. That's the issue here. You just made some. You you don't have examples. You are, you don't actually have any criticism. I 
I asked you straightforward. I asked you straightforward. I asked you straightforward. You know, just tell me what you meant. Tell me what you meant. And now you call out emotion, you know, but in all honesty, it's very straightforward. You have nothing of content to say. There's nothing useful that you're saying. And that's it. You know, you know, I get called out on a daily basis, 80 times minimum. Do you think I get emotional? Nevertheless, we continue with the review. Yeah. This is very interesting. Pantheon Talia into Soraka because most of the time people have been picking very strange things into Soraka, you know? It's just um, it's, it's it's an interesting way to approach it. I think also like when enemy has Orn Flex, it's very hard to pick mid lane. I I I don't know how to solve it. I don't know how to solve it. You also banned every champion that's good into Orn, and I just think first three draft was lost after first three. For example, you said Kled is good into Zack. Well, Kled is good into Zack. If you rewatch the game, there were many opportunities in the game where Kled could snowball. Kled was not the issue. The issue was that they had Syndra and Zaya, and they looked to pick Syndra and Zaya, and they couldn't do anything. Syndra and Zaya lock in rotation was just a problem. Kled had a lot of opportunity to snowball onto Zack. Sure, on 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 the stream I said that uh, like like Shox, Shox asked me for a prediction, and you know when I see a draft that has Zack Kled blind pick, I don't know what to make of it right away, you know. I and then she asked me to make a prediction on the spot. I just say okay, I think Kled is gonna take over this game. That was my prediction. It didn't happen. I was wrong. And in hindsight, I would say Fnatic draft much better. But Kled wins against Zack. And keep in mind, I'm 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 Kled Zack is not a matchup I have a lot of knowledge on. And I'm in the moment where in the moment I need to make I need to make a statement, you know, for the matchup. Zack was not picked for the lane, of course. They picked Zack because it can do well into Syndra and it's good for the comp. With Orn and Zack together, they can get through the Syndra E and the and the Zack ult, right? No, no, there's there's no no reason to apologize, Christian Channel, haha. No reason to apologize at all. It's just important for me that if someone calls if someone calls you stupid, you would love to know why, right? Then you'd love to have some examples, and then maybe there can be some clarification, and maybe there's some there's a point to what you're saying, and maybe there's a point that I couldn't come across with, right? Especially in in the environment of broadcast, if if I'm going to be speaking online like this for anyone, like for for anyone that speaks like this uh, in in this setting, I will dominate Thorin, LS, me, everyone else that speaks in this setting. If you want to. Look at every single thing. I'm sure you can find things that people said that it was wrong. You can take it out of context. You can run away with it. But imagine you're in a position where there's hours and hours of footage of you talking. There's going to be some things that you're going to say that is that is wrong. Honestly, I, I don't see how to solve uh, OG draft after the first three picks. I think just this is so much better. I, like I think maybe like Sejuani Camille is the best, honestly. Just pick Sejuani Camille. I think is the best. And uh, if anything, I want to apologize to you as well, Christian Channel, haha, because I didn't want you to put you on blast. But it's just funny, you know. It was funny that it's like I don't remember, you know. That was the conclusion. So this is this is just uh, got here. Thank you so much for subscribing. Also, Myra in the sky with diamonds. Thank you so much for subscribing two months in a row. Thank you so much. I was distracted by other things, and I should focus on the people that uh, give me money, give me money.
Hey babe, how you doing, Tifa? Vega V2 smurfing with these drafts? Yeah, Vega V2, man. I lost against Vega V2 in, in Arabic tournament. Just these three is, is, is got here. This is just tremendous, man. I think, probably, I think Sejuani. <laughs> go go Sejuani uh, Camille here. Best option. Just go Sejuani Camille, I think, is, is the best way. Nexus tournament is big, big kick W. Okay, let's jump into the game. Honestly, I'm going to close the window because what the hell is going on out there? Thoughts on Victor Jarvan? I think it's rough. So honestly, uh, OG did some good moves in the early game because they actually managed to suppress Pantheon. So obviously every every range against melee matchup you want to play it in a way where early waves, you slow push, you stack a wave, and then you crash the wave, make it bounce, and then you look for a freeze, right? The bigger the wave is, the less opportunities Pantheon is going to have to all in you. Rex are pathing into top. Uh, Talia clear is a bit slow in the early levels. Pantheon leashed, Soraka didn't leash, so that's advantage Soraka, right? Soraka can stack a wave. She wants to stack a big wave, make the wave crash, harass Pantheon as much as possible under the wave, make him too low to all in, because obviously every melee against range matchup is melee wants to all in, range wants to poke. So this is the whole idea of it. Rise early prior, hovering into topside, very normal stuff. They are trying to deny and pressure Pantheon as much as possible. So here, uh, some good moves. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Maybe they should flash here on Pan uh, on, on, on Rek'Sai. Because imagine here, like here, Selfmade is hiding on Bush. Imagine here if Bipo flashes. But I don't know which spells Bipo goes. I guess I imagine like Q, E maybe. I don't know what he's... I, I know very little about Pantheon, honestly. I thought maybe they can go for kill here. But maybe it's dangerous as well. Like, like imagine Soraka flash Ws and it's a disaster. So let's forget that I brought it up, you know? Let's uh, forget that I brought it up. Fnatic bot lane matchup I think is better for them. Maybe on 6 all in they have uh, chances OG. Uh, self made playing in a way where he sacrificed a lot of his time in order to pressure lanes. He already has a base, Rex is in base and cleared. So Zux is going to be level 4 first. Talia is also getting bot crab, and then here Rek'Sai doesn't get spotted, but I think Fnatic is just going to give up to push here. I think they're respecting Rek'Sai, nevertheless. Selfmade needs to clear. I think this is something that was a big improvement for Fnatic, is they are respecting timers of self-made, which I think is super, super good. Isn't going TP on Soraka against Pantheon Giga Greedy? Not really. So here already, uh, Soraka is freezing the wave, as we mentioned before. We don't see it on the map right now, but... Uh, Nuktak is hovering into topside and Sorak is allowed to freeze and this put, pa puts Pantheon in a very awkward position. He's basing here when the wave is in a bad position, he's TPing back, he needs to get double longsword and uh, he needs to look for something. So this was a very good gank honestly, very nice. Rek'Sai on this side of the map is, is, is very dangerous. Rek'Sai flash is almost always a guaranteed kill. The big thing is that you just need to think about it. You need to think about it. But also here, um, after uh, OG's bot lane got to push in the wave, Zerx is st stuck around for a very long time. And uh, uh, I think Fnatic's read was that when OG pushed in the first time, OG pushed in the first time that, um, of course, when when Fnatic when OG pushed in the first time that this was uh, Rexai's timing to be there, and then uh, Xerxes just committed into the gank. It's funny because Xerxes was doing something that Selfmade really likes doing, and that is like committing to something and really looking for the value. And I think Fnatic just didn't expect this at all because still Rexai has no base. I think Xerxes is the best. No, I think Yankos is the best, guys. This is uh, without a question.
But it also starts in the most horrible way possible because I think Hillisang uh, reads this. It looks like Hillisang reads this and then uh, Felix gets hit by uh, Nautilus Q here. And that's, a, that's a problem. Looks like no TP. Uh, Nemesis still has TP and uh, he is even in CS. So Nemesis is doing a great job even though the lane is not showing it too much. Soraka is also after the first push and then the freeze. It's very, very good. And uh, here uh, Nemesis has a very big tempo swing because Rise was, uh, of course, out of mana. So this is very nice, very, very good, and uh, this recovers Bipo's lane big time. The issue comes from Nuktak. I don't know how he manages mana in a way where Nemesis has TP on, and on top of that, you know, he has Pryo, which is crazy. Which tells me either Rise was just a really, really shit pick, or uh, Nuktak made a mistake. Xerxes is definitely not one of the worst. Xerxes is easily, easily top 3. Easily. Right now, top 3 teams have top 3 junglers. To say Xerxes is bad is really disgusting. You have to be smoking. Look at... Uh, Xerxes is really good. Soraka still have R. Soraka still have R, that is right. Shiripa unlucky, thank you so much, make some mother flipping noise. The matchup of our dreams, Orn versus Soraka, guys. Yeah, Orn did, uh, Soraka did have ult actually, you're right. So next expectation still is Nemesis is in such a good position on mid that it's kind of worrisome. I think they are sending Nuktak into top uh, because of the position Alfari was in, of course, because of the map, and also because Ryze actually has flash. And uh, Ryze is right now ahead of Pantheon enough to actually cause some damage. Nuktak doesn't have TP, Whippo has ult. So ideally, the way you would play it is Fnatic play through top side and then they look to Pantheon ult into mid. While Origin... Didn't burn any summoners of Aphelios, so the, the bottom state of the map is still the same. Look at Aphelios, how ahead he is. He's super, super happy. Hilisang playing Lantern. I think maybe they are just respecting Rexa here because they don't know his position. Rexa is on bot side. Here, Fnatic Jewel just continue to play through top side, play through Pantheon, and then Pantheon look to ult mid with own ult and then just look to one shot. I think it's a very, very neat way to, to do it. Uh, Self made also uh, from before when Rexa spent so much time on, on bottom side. I think Talia's uh, farm-wise being ahead is, is very, very good for her. And getting that kill earlier uh, just lets her buy AP jungle item. And for every AP jungler, it's such a big difference. Ooh. It's such a big difference here uh, when... Um, when you are... Um, what am I trying to say? Uh, when you're an AP jungler and you get the opportunity to buy finish your AP jungle item, it just accelerates your clear by so much because you don't go home and you, you have so much to, to offer. So it's very nice. Very, very juicy. Honestly, Fnatic, uh, Fnatic bot lane, like this is a very standard timing and I don't know if it's just Alfari being uh, feeling off here in the mid lane because he's in mid. And doesn't recognize the timing because this is a standard rift herald timing base uh, bottom wave if if fanatic bot lane was there they would have caught it and then with hillisang flash they get a the kill why soraka doesn't use heal well here it wouldn't matter once again right i don't think it would save her and this is just uh alfari not respecting this angle and fanatic just recognizing the moment which is very very good is she dead without rush flash Hmm, maybe not. I think she has to flash. The next level move would be Hillisang flaying, killing the creeps, and then queuing. But if I'm Hillisang here, I don't know how much damage Ornwald is gonna do to the wave. Because look, imagine he flays and hooks. Then, yeah, he does need to flash it, right? I think, like, 
OG should have went to Giovanni Camilla, I think. It would have been the best. But still, first three, I think Fnatic uh, were way better off. Yeah, like if Helisang fl flays the creep so they die and then hooks on the Orn ult, then they don't need to use flash. You guys need to keep in mind that Soraka has silence. Yeah? Keep in mind Soraka has silence. Why would Camille be good here? It's just uh, like all top lanes are banned. Aatrox is banned, Gangplank is banned. They need to have uh, AD top laner and then they put also Camille on mid. And then they have a strong 2v2. No, I'm in agreement that they don't need to use flash. Because the silence is uh, poor use. And uh, you guys are mentioning Moby Boots, but his Moby Boots are proc right? so... Okay. So game state here is very good for Fnatic. We need to keep in mind that they also have Rift Herald, right? They got Platings, most likely with this Rift, and the prior they have at this point in the game means that they're going to secure the first turret too. Should junglers ever go Mobility Boots? I like to go Mobility Boots in solo queue when uh, a lot of flash flashes are burnt and you need to just be everywhere and you're not spending time clearing. But um, in competitive, not so much. Rarely you're in that position. So it's interesting here how uh, Fnatic are making a very, very clear effort of uh, always rotating away from enemy bot lane and they're trying to mismatch at every turn here because they know if they have mismatch and they have Rift Herald that they're going to be better off. Because you see here, Orn caught bottom, no aggressive maneuver from OG, no dive pressure, no nothing. They rotate after Aphelios and Thresh. Aphelios Thresh already pushed mid wave, rotate into mid lane, and then they pushed out top lane again. And Origin now uh, read it properly because Upset was walking top side first and now rises on top. And now with all this movement where OG were reacting, Fnatic have a good wave state everywhere to, to go for this. Pantheon based. Oh, he didn't base. Oh. Okay. Honestly, I didn't watch I didn't watch the 20 minutes of this game. What the fuck happened to Rise? What happened to Rise here? He's pushing. I thought Bippo was recalling or ulting on mid, but it turns out it's just one-shotting the, the rise. And then the ward here on lane is just too good. Oh! Two platings on mid, very low HP as well, better position for Drake. People has CP as well. All the early advantage that Nuktak committed to, to create top is just gone. So easily, like here, he just sees him, he knows he's recalling in his bush because he has a war that uh, places him, but then, Jesus, look at that combination. Then my window's all closed, and we heard this ambulance. <laughs> Fucking Soraka was jogging, man. But once again, Alfari, could he save him with ult? Because Alfari didn't ult. Because imagine Alfari ults here with the Athens and then he jogs away with uh, with uh, with Phase Rush or something. But no.
Yeah, I'm not sure why Fnatic are trading sides. Because here, uh, Reckless Tempo is, it becomes very bad because he does red into base. Because ideally here, because cause look, the self-made is spending time in bottom side, but OG are just committing into playing mid into top. And then here, Fnatic uh, need to recover tempo somehow and do something aggressive. Because I think, well, the question is, do they just not, they don't think they are in position to, they're not in position to, to force? Because here I see Orn TP available, and I wonder if Fnatic red timing is just bad. But Fnatic, they couldn't contest mid anyway because Talia was bot. So I think Talia going bottom maybe is just wrong. They should contest mid and then hover into top and threaten the fact that they have TP and bottom wave is pushed. But this isn't the end of days either, like they, they are pushing bottom and they're trading evenly, it's not a problem, and Aphelios had Essence River base, so it's not a problem. I just wanted to look at it, I was curious. So I have um, a trade now. But now OG are a bit too late on mid-wave. You know, is, is is grouping. I don't know why... Alfari doesn't make the attempt of going bottom because there were so many creeps lost on bottom side that it's almost like a, a criminal. I think Soraka ulting here for only Nautilus is also not correct. Not sure why Soraka was grouping mid like this. That they have two TPs, Soraka can just be bottom and then react depending on uh, Fnatic's moves. Because uh, they lost a full bottom tower here for nothing. While Pantheon actually caught top waves and now Orn is matching top. It's just about the CS more than anything. This was a massive over overextension. Like Pantheon was hitting bottom tower, they no don't need to force mid tower here. With the tempo that uh, Pantheon is going to create here, he can move into mid and then I think also uh, Rise needs space. So I think eventually they will get mid tower. They don't need to force here. Fnatic. Rise is getting pretty strong. So like on, on, on split he, he can have some chances to win. But uh, Talia and Pantheon are fast enough to actually just look for 2v2s on site and... Uh, Go for it. Because Talia I'm pretty much like on level 11. She practically has global ult, so uh, it's um, pretty good. I, th I think Fnatic should just not commit for the mid tower there. Bottom lane is now being ignored. Fnatic are in a position where they don't have TPs, so they're playing just 4 1. Always when you don't have TPs, most of the time you end up playing a 4 1. 4-1 meaning that you push mid, hover into top, make sure your one can push all the way, and then that one goes into mid and the, the other uh, solo laner goes onto bottom side and clears on the next mid. Free Rift Herald. Oh, 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 oh. Very dangerous gameplay here from... from you need to see that the enemy has... Uh, Athens on Holy Grail, he cannot one-shot. Pantheon maybe could have been a bit more aggressive. I think here you don't go mid. I mean, I mean you have to walk five on mid. I think Nemesis is the best uh, Ormid we have in the league. I think uh, they should have ignored top and gone straight into mid. 
Very nice. Look at that. Look at that combo, man. Boom, 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 boom. Very nice. Oh. Did you guys see like Mickey on mid? <coughs> Disgusting. I think Selfish should not flash like that and they should have five man uh, mid lane. Keep Herald, you have time, no need to rush. No need to rush at all. Go five man on mid right away, and I think uh, there is no threat of, of mid tower. And then Talia flash was a bit uh, optimistic. I think full dominance of the map. They just play 2 to 1. 2 to 1. What, what's OG doing here? Whoa, whoa, whoa. OG, what the fuck? What? This, is, this was full solo queue. Yeah, Perks was, was fine as well. This is solo queue, you know, you ping enemy the Drake and then... <laughs> uh, it's, it's madness. What's this Soraka TP on the wave? What is this? What on earth? What on earth happened, man? Honestly, I'm, I'm super excited for this Fnatic, man. We, I, we all knew this was coming at some point in time, but this week in itself was was really juicy well this play on bottom is honestly just uh just a game loser the game is over i think now because now pantheon is getting so fed he can one shot uh, rise on his own man <laughs> Nukta tries to to rise ult onto them. There's enough items to upgrade already for Humus Wraith Blade and Molten Edge. Horn doesn't have TPs. I don't remember what's hiding behind it. Hilliant. At least one. Yeah. <laughs> I was watching um, the Dubai tournament and there was an Orn that went Adaptive Helmet into Gargoyle Stoneplate. The Orn finished the game without upgrading any of his own items. Can you fucking believe it? It was really, really like mind-boggling. Dubai Female World Championship. In the finals, nevertheless. He didn't win. She didn't win. Okay, let's take a look here. Self-made walking up a bit too far, man. Good hook here from Destiny, honestly. But... We see self-made's position as if um, he's, he thinks he's a sneaky ninja here, but he's he's walking forward and he's visible. That's a good stopwatch, good timer. Here comes the money, man. Yeah, the fight could have...
Very neat stuff. Oh. No blue trinket. But it takes so long for them to move. But Aphelios is killing it so fucking fast. It's so unfair, man. <laughs> Aphelios is one shot at it. Fnatic best team right now? Honestly, Draft Kingdom. Team that has Draft Kingdom is 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 winning, man. Draft Kingdom. There's no recovery for OG now, like they don't win split and uh, 5v5 they lose too. Like losing 5v5 with Soraka just means that you are in such a terrible game state. Here I think Bipu was not paying attention to what his team is doing because he's hopping in here like a madman. But... Um yeah, Fnatic is his best team. This this fanatic is Draft Kingdom fanatic, but um, of course it's, I, I think it's just uh, it's a team effort. We we shouldn't like we shouldn't ever say draft is like draft is always team effort. Split push meta ten point four. Yeah, I think people doesn't need to pull the trigger. Oof. Mortal Kombat! Look at Nuktak doing so much damage to Nemesis, man. Uh, what happened to self -made? Why did he land on that side? <laughs> did Chandler get buffed? I don't remember. Look at Pantheon. Look at, look at Pantheon. That's one for one. Holy Draft Kingdom fanatic, man. Game is over. Giga over. I think Righteous Glory is pretty trash here, but honestly, you can't buy anything to, to do anything this game. Pantheon is too far ahead. You can't split with Rise. I think if you can't split push with Rise and win, it's a useless champ. Hmm. He can't do anything. Pantheon is too strong for, for Rise to do anything. Like Pantheon, if, if Pantheon can 1v1 Rise at this point in the game, it's 
It's really bad. Looks like she would get void third. Nah, no, like at this point, like if you want to win split, you need death cap third into like like into void, I think. It's good. I just think death cap is such an OP item on rise because you have so much AP. Honestly, self-made Talia is pretty fucking good. Look at Mythy Socks. What is the secret to success? Preparation. Man, fanatic draft kingdom, guys. Really, really insane. Draft Kingdom. Big Draft Kingdom. <laughs> 